Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And I've got a question for you today. Have you ever looked at a knife and liked it but thought, man, it would be that much cooler if maybe this one little thing were changed? Well, that's where our exclusives program comes in. And today we're going to look at some of our latest and greatest from that program. Let's check them out. I think one of my favorite parts of my job here at the Knife Center is the fact that I kind of get to play around with some of these knife designs out there. You know, all you have to do is ask some of these manufacturers and if you're willing to put up the money to, uh, to finance a run, it's a good chance they might make something for you. So it's really cool. In a way, we kind of get to play with every manufacturer's playset out there, and come up with some pretty cool stuff. So the thing we're gonna look at first today actually has its roots way back at one of the most successful lines of exclusives here at the Knife Center, and that's our pack of wood family that started with Spyderco. And now the Indela is one of the latest to join that pack of wood family. Really cool knife. It neatly splits the difference between the Delica on the smaller side and the Endura on the larger side. And I like to say with the 3.4 inch blade, this is kind of the default knife size today. Things tend to be between like three and a quarter to three and a half inches across a very large percentage of new releases out there. So this fits in right along with the rest. Now the price on these is about 200 bucks and you've got a laminated blade. So you've got three layers. On the outer two layers, you've got a stainless steel and on the inner, you've got HAP 40, which is a powder metallurgy, powder metallurgy, high speed tool steel, good edge retention, good toughness, and it's gonna patina a little bit too over time, which is gonna look really good next to that great pack of wood. Each one's a little bit different because it is made with natural wood layers and resin, but because you get that resin part of the material, it's a lot more stable than just a normal and natural wood can be, which can shrink, swell, crack a lot more readily than you would be able to get with this material. One of the cool things about our exclusive Indela is it's the only non-lightweight version of this knife out there right now. You've got full liners on both sides, so you've got a lot of strength, a little bit more solid feel in the hand. And of course, everything else is classic Indela stuff. Classic Spyderco stuff, actually, if we're talking about it. Nice full flat grind on the blade, very slicey. Four position pocket clip so you can carry it just about wherever you like. And the David Boy dent right out of that mid mounted lock back there, which makes it a little harder to accidentally disengage if you're really gripping the knife hard. Just overall, a super classy presentation for this excellent knife. Now we've been expanding some of the pack of wood offerings in our exclusives lately beyond just Spyderco and prominent among those is Artisan Cutlery and this knife right here, which is a Knife Center exclusive pattern, the small non-locking Archeo. We're really happy to have this knife in our stable because it pretty much does everything just about anywhere. Uh, and what I mean by that is it may not be the biggest or the toughest knife, but this is a knife that you could carry just about anywhere because of a few key reasons. First of which, you've got a sub three inch blade. So if a lot of places that have a blade length restriction, most of those places, three inches will get you by just fine. This knife also combines the best parts of a non-locking knife with modern locking flippers. And it is a detent joint style of retention here to keep the blade open, which means it is non-locking but you can lock it if you want to with this nice stop pin here, which is attached at the back with a small lanyard. That's gonna fit right in behind the tang of the blade, keep it from closing. You can also keep it from opening if you do that when the blade is in the closed position. But speaking of that closed position, one of the advantages of this detent style lock is you can flick that blade closed. If you, you, know, you gotta practice the pressure at the right point just a little bit and each knife is gonna be a little bit different, but you can. And on this knife, you've got a nice little flipper tab as well, which means you can flip it open, just like a modern locking flipper. And even if you don't go and put that stop pin in, you do have a little bit of protection because that flipper tab is gonna hit your finger if the blade does happen to disengage while you're cutting. Just overall, it's a supremely well thought out design. Take it, like I said, just about anywhere. Blade shape, nice and acute. You can pierce with it pretty well, get some, Slightly more powerful cuts as well. Just a good shape for general utility. We've got a VG10 Damascus on this particular version and pack of wood, like I said, but we've got uh, a handful of different colors 
for this knife because like I said, this being our pattern, we wanted to make sure to give you guys plenty of options. Now the latest new additions to the, uh, the Packerwood Artisan family is the Centauri series, both large and small versions. I've got a, uh, a large from slightly different color here so you can see the differences between the two. Uh, but the small in Packerwood especially, I think, makes a fantastic gentleman's knife. Sub three inch blade again. In a way it's got some things in common with the, uh, the small Archeos blade, at least in terms of the things you're gonna be able to do with it. Uh, but slightly higher grind, might be a little bit slicier in this case, but check out the really cool lines going on here. Array Laconico design, so you would expect something very nice like that. I've got an inset liner lock here, and this is a front flipping knife. It actually works pretty well, even if you're not like the best at front flippers, like I sometimes am not, this is gonna work pretty nicely. And on this one as well, a couple different variations in addition to just the Packerwood version here, but the Packerwood looks really good, especially with the gold accents at the pivot, backspacer, and that nice milled pocket clip. All right, jumping back to another non-locking exclusive, not Packerwood, but we have this natural micarta that kind of sits in a similar vein, at least tonally, and this is a real steel Luna one of the higher end versions, some uh, G10 and D2 versions of these can ha be had very affordably. But these Micarta versions, you can get it in natural or green canvas Micarta, are paired with a Baalbach Damascus blade. And these come in at about 140. And in addition to that very premium blade steel here, these also are limited. So once these are out, they are gonna be out. But while they're not, we got them right here. Now it's funny that I just mentioned kind of the three and a quarter to three and a half inch blade as being quote unquote standard and then proceed to show you three blades that are under three inches in each case. This one right here, about two and three quarters. It's got a good slicing sweep to the belly, very acute tip for piercing when you need it. It's a slip joint, however, non-locking, so be careful when you pierce with it. And the blade stock, nice and thin with a full flat grind so that it is going to be very efficient while it cuts. Now, unlike a lot of traditional slip joints, you've actually got a pocket clip on this guy. It's right side tip up and deep carry, and it's very subtle. It's not a big wide clip from the outside, which means it's gonna be very discreet when it is in your pocket. Again, another knife that you can take probably just about anywhere. Always check your local regs, of course, but another one that's gonna fit those things quite nicely. Now you don't get a secondary lock like that small Archeo comes with, but you do get a little bit of extra safety due to the way they've done the Ricasso here. You can see you've got a little bit of jimping here right at the front, which lets your fingers know they're in the right place and not sliding too far forward. And also, if the blade disengages, it's not as positive of a, uh, of a safety as on that small Archeo with its flipper tab, but your finger is gonna be there to keep it from moving too far into the closed position, provided you have a good grip on the knife. All right, next up, orange and black. With orange and black essentially being the colors that make up the Knife Center logo, there's some good opportunities to uh, fold that in to some exclusives. And I'll start on the high end with Shiragorov. This is the F95NL coming in at about 700 bucks. A very premium folder, but you can get some orange and black less expensive. But we'll start with this knife. Blade, just under four inches, L-Max steel. And just like pretty much every Shiro out there, you've got a full flat grind with an extremely thin and extremely sharp edge really, really nicely executed. And you'd hope it would be for the kind of money that you'd be paying for this. Now, the machining on the handles is world-class. You've got titanium and a black and orange G10 inlay on both sides. But rather than being just a typical stacked black and orange layers, you've got, some would call this like a coral or even a topographic pattern, kind of resembles a topographic map in certain respects. Although I tend to think the layered look is a little more topographic, but whatever you want to call it, it's a cool new spin on just typical layered G10, and it looks really good here. Now, one of the things I like about the Shiragorovs is for the folks out there who kind of want something like a Chris Reeve Sabenza, but want a flipper, this is a great place to look, this whole family of knives. There's some smaller versions as well, because the quality is right up there with something like a Chris Reeve, and you've got fantastic action. You get that drop shut, which a lot of people like, and you get really crisp flipping action thanks to the bearings in those pivot and the excellent detent action that they come with. Now you've got a milled titanium pocket clip here on the back. 
Cool fastener here, not a typical Torx head. You can see it's sort of a modified flat head that's matched here on the pivot as well. Nice and open on the back, just a single post near the rear of the knife. Makes it very clean looking and very easy to keep clean since you know pocket dust and that sort of thing isn't gonna get caught up in there. It's just top notch stuff, whether you get it with the Knife Center exclusive inlays or one of the other versions, definitely check these guys out. Now these are definitely more expensive, like I said, but if you want kind of that kind of orange and black G10, we've got several of our artisan cutlery exclusives available with a very similar black and orange G10. Not quite as broad in the, uh, the color strokes, it's a little finer. So you get that, but in a way, this also tends to look a little bit like some woods out there. Not if you're uh, really examining the oranges in there, but at a glance, it could almost look like desert ironwood in some instances. Now, pricing on these guys, I didn't mention before, uh, the small versions we have start at about uh, 105 for the pack of woods, uh, and we're topping out right now about 120 for the large versions, depending on which handle you get. So very affordable for these knives, especially on this guy right here, which is the uh, large size, about a three and a half inch blade with S35 VN steel, really good high performance there. And especially on the larger blade, definitely feel like you've got a lot of shearing power built into that blade shape. It's gonna push through some cuts very well. Accents in this case, we've got blue on the pivot collar and that milled titanium pocket clip, but a matching G10 backspacer, which is pretty cool. Still got the inset liner lock, still got the front flipping, which still works very well at both sizes. Next up, we've got some Southern Grind Spider Monkey exclusives with an orange and black G10, but rather than black layers of G10, the black in this composite is carbon fiber. So you get a really cool look. It's a little bit kind of rugged and tactical while also being a little bit more upscale because of that, uh, that carbon shimmer that you get right there. Uh, two different versions, you can get it with the black PVD coated blade and matching liners and hardware. That's about 350 bucks. Uh, if you prefer stonewash with um, satin matching hardware, that's about 325. Blade length here is three and a quarter inches and S45 VN, one of the few folders out there right now that is using this steel. More are expected in the future, more are gonna be rolling out as time goes on, but not a whole lot right now that you can get your hands on. Really cool blade shape for EDC as well. Just a versatile drop point, good lines, has some good flow between the blade and the handle itself. Handle a little bit on the smaller side. It's about a three and a half finger grip for me if I'm holding right at the index finger there, but my hands are a little slightly larger than average. But I do like the contouring you get. Not only does it reveal the cool layers of that handle material, it also feels good in the hand. Now, one of the areas where I think orange and black tends to look really good is on some aggressive tactical stuff. So not much more tactical than this particular knife right here, which is the CQC7 from Emerson, that the design is anyway, which is one of the most famous tactical folders of all time. And this particular one is an automatic version made by Protec. Super, super nice. Comes in about 225 right now. Blade itself is 154 cm, stonewashed finish, and you get the traditional Emerson chisel grind. You can see here it's completely flat on the backside. Backside also has aluminum for the chassis of the, uh, the Protec construction there, but we've got a nice layer of orange and black micarta in this case, not G10. Really nicely done. You've got a faux bolster kind of milled in and some checkering behind it that looks pretty cool. You can see the side of the weave when you hold it from the tip or the, uh, the spine down position. Just looks very, very cool and it gives you some good traction as well. Of course, micarta feels a little tackier when it is wet, but on top of that, when dry, you've got that nice texturing to boot. And being a Protec, I tend to kind of close out every time I'm talking about a Protec by saying this, it has that excellent Protec action, which is definitely an industry leading side opening automatic. All right, next up, we've got a fixed blade in orange and black, and it's the very aggressive, but very EDC friendly RMJ Jackdaw. And this comes in about 200 bucks right now. These are made in the USA, small batches, and we've got a Nitro V blade steel, about three and a quarter inches long. So you've got stainlessness and you've got a good amount of toughness in addition to the edge retention that Nitro V brings to the table. Now the coating here is a Cerakote to be nice and tough as well. And you've got a bit of a hollow grind here to keep it a little bit thinner behind the edge so that you can slice fairly decently with it. But 
you can get some good powerful strokes along with this particular blade shape as well. And because the leading edge of this cleaver is kind of clipped out as opposed to being a straight cut, you get a fairly acute point to do kind of piercing things that you're going to need to do day to day as well, like opening packages or boxes and that sort of thing. The handles I really enjoy. They're very similar. In fact, if I'm remembering correctly, they're the same size as the Sparrow that RMJ makes, which is a more narrow blade, but it's just enough, about three and a half fingers in, in this case, maybe three if you've got larger hands, but it feels solid. And that's thanks to the aggressive milling they've got, kind of this twist pattern that's on that black and orange G10. And in addition to having just a good finger guard or a good uh, finger groove there at the front, it does feel fairly locked in for its size. Now the sheath makes it very easy to carry on the daily as well. You've got Kydex and you've got two straps, two horizontal straps that are going to make it very easy to carry on your belt. For me personally, if I'm not pocket carrying a uh, EDC fixed blade, that's kind of the style I prefer. That cross draw it keeps it a little bit more out of the way than just a traditional belt sheath. And you've got a pull the dot snap on both ends of these. So if you're coming along and you do happen to snag something, it's not going to come undone because this is only going to unsnap in the one single direction that it's installed in. So it's going to make it easy to get on and off that belt when you uh, need it to come on or off, but not when you don't. Our next up, we've got some black and red options, which we've been kind of leaning into a little bit lately. Uh, first is the Hogue Deca. Now we've got two blade shapes and two finishes available on these knives. You can get these in this black coated version or a stone washed 20 CV on all of them in any case. And you've got the clip point shape or this kind of modified reverse Warncliffe Tonto thing that's going on. Whatever you call it though, another great utility player for this blade shape. The prices on these just above 140 for the stone wash and about 149 for the black coated and the black coated version is paired up with black hardware, which kind of blends into that black and red G Mascus, which is another G10 product here has a really, really stealthy look with a little bit going on, not completely blacked out, but it keeps things nice and aggressive. If that's the kind of vibe you enjoy. Blade length is about three and a quarter. Like I said, 20 CV for great edge retention and the stock is nice and thin. So you've got really good slicing geometry on both blade shapes. Speaking of geometries, you've also got a very well executed crossbar lock. Hogue calls it their able lock that allows it to very, very smoothly and silkily do that kind of open and close with the wrist flick. Or of course, you can be a little more deliberate. And for fans of like that drop shut stuff, this type of lock is always great for that sort of thing. All right, next up, we've got the CJRB Rhea, latest version that we've come out with, with a black and red linen micarta handle and a black coated blade. But with CJRB being kind of the subsidiary company, the budget subsidiary to artisan cutlery, most of the artisan cutlery colorways that you can see on the other exclusives, you're going to find on this Rhea as well, as well as a couple others that don't show up on all the other versions because we just love this knife. It's got a very classically inspired profile while still being original. It's not just a mimic of kind of any old school slip joint out there, but it also isn't an old school slip joint. This is a modern liner locking folder. You've got a single thumb stud for the opening. It's not a flipper allows it to close up with a very sleek profile in that closed position but it's the opening action of this knife that really elevates it to kind of the next stage. We got ball bearings in the pivot, a perfectly placed thumb stud and a nice crisp detent gives you truly taut and crisp flipping open action, not flipping, flicking with a thumb, but you know what I mean? Just feels phenomenal, almost assisted in a way. Now the blade steel on this one, RPM nine, which is CJRB's kind of budget powder metallurgy steel. Supposedly, it's supposed to give you something like D2 levels of edge retention while being easier to sharpen and stainless to boot. So it's pretty good material. If you're not keen on the black coating, though, you can get it in satin versions on some of the other options that we have in the lineup. You can get the milled titanium pocket clip on this version, although some have a deep carry pocket clip if you want to keep things extra subtle. Next up, we've got some black and white stuff call it a tuxedo look or perhaps a stormtrooper look if you're uh, if you're into that sort of thing. We've been uh, playing around with this color combination a little bit recently as well. And this one right here is a very recent addition. This is the Wii Kite Fin. 
previously available with just titanium or carbon fiber for the handle scales. In order to get the price down just a little bit, we outfitted this with the black and white G10 with a really cool milling pattern going on. It kind of combines a couple of the milling patterns together from the titanium version. So you get these cool ellipses as well as the reveal of the black and white along the edges. Now we thought some subtle gold touches would be just kind of the perfect accent. You can see it here on the screws for the backspacer, a little bit, actually not on the front pivot, but on the pivot on the back, which is black titanium frame lock. You also get a little bit of that gold in the deep carry pocket clip here as well. But I think the reason this knife has been so success successful is kind of the size to weight to quality to price ratio taken all in. Fairly, uh, fairly light knife, it's about two and a half ounces, three and a quarter inch blade, S35 VN steel, and being a Wii, they do nice thin edges very nicely as well, just kind of like Shiro does. Although right here, you've got a hollow grind on this particular knife with a satin finish. And this guy is priced at 140, so a little bit less than the uh, titanium and carbon fiber versions out there. So it's like, even easier to obtain. And you've still got the great performance, nice thin blade steel, it's gonna slice really great, and it's gonna flip really great thanks to the ball bearings and the flipping action as well. Now all of that combines for a pretty compelling package at that price, which makes this next knife even more impressive. And that is the Best Tech Swordfish, which quality wise, in terms of kind of the premium feel, the kite fin definitely has a little bit more, but in terms of just having more, this guy has a four inch blade of S35 VN, and the price on this guy is just 90 bucks right now. Really compelling price for a lot of performance. Although we've had satin versions of this in the past, and we should again in the future, right now we've got the black coated version, which has made it up with a bolstered G10 handle with white on the back and black for the bolster. Striking look for sure, a little bit of contour going on, and a very hand filling grip. I mean, definitely has a little bit more chunkiness to it than the very slim kite fin that you get right there. Now you don't get a titanium frame lock in this case, you've got a liner lock, but that G10 on the back really completes the feel of the grip and the rest of the operational feel of the knife, ball bearings going on too, nice flipping action, deep carry pocket clip. Actually that deep carry is really nice on this blade. It's a little bit thick, but it's still fairly narrow. So with the deep carry clip, it's not gonna take up a ton of space in your pocket or be too visible out of the pocket, but you're gonna be able to deploy a lot of blade. And if you don't like the white, guess what? The white is really nice in that it'll take some of the writ dyes out there really nicely. So this be a really nice one to dye a custom color if you wish, because the black is gonna go with pretty much anything. So next up are a few knives that don't really fall into some of the, uh, the categories, some of our regular categories, so to speak, but we just had an opportunity to do something cool. And the first one is the Viper Turn. One of my favorite lockbacks to be released in the last several years. And our exclusive version here is coming in at about 250 bucks and it wears the jungle wear green carbon fiber. Looks very cool, even better in person than it does in photos. And you got a little bit of contouring to the handles. So even though this is not necessarily shaped to be like a hard working folder, you do have that nice feel from that contouring when you go to stick it in your palm. Likewise, the blade combines that kind of striking good looks along with utility. I mean, I love the drop to the, uh, the clip point here. Reminds me a lot of a lot of the hand forged custom buoys that you see all the time. M390 blade, three and a quarter inches, full flat grind with a swedge, gonna be a great slicer, especially with this amount of belly, since they keep the angle down a little bit, it's less likely to slip out of a cut. You're really gonna be able to push through some things. It's also gonna be easy to carry thanks to the deep carry pocket clip. It is a right side tip up only. And the lock back is easy to use. You've got thumb studs here and interestingly, ball bearings in this guy as well. You don't usually see ball bearings combined with a lock back, but because of that, you can really flick it quite easily. And on top of that, being a Viper, being an Italian knife, you get a few nice kind of Italian touches, things we see a lot from them, such as crown spine along here, which continues through that backspacer and the lock back. Titanium here for the bolsters, just a fantastic knife. 
Next up is a Kaiser Sheepdog. We've got it in the mini and the full size right here, which comes in just under 200 bucks. And we're pairing a black linen micarta handle with a CPM 4V blade steel. A little bit uh, more edge retention than something like 3V, but still nice and tough, which feels really great on this big cleaver style of blade. You might want to push this to or push this through some heavier cuts so that added toughness feels very in character. And you've got a nice stone washed finish to back up that working character as well. This can help a little bit with stain resistance as 4V is not a stainless steel also. One of the nice things about the full size version with the contouring to the handles, noticing a theme here, you see some of the layers of that linen, but you also get a very hand filling grip for this very aggressive blade. Pocket clip is milled titanium. The lock is an inset liner and the flipping action on these guys is backed up by ball bearings in the pivot that also give it that drop shut action you just saw. And the wide flipper tab really lets you rocket that blade out when you're ready to get to work. Last but not least is a very interesting blade, the Reich Tuli. We've got a couple different versions of it, but we've got right now a good quantity of the black with carbon fiber inlays on both sides, priced about 150 bucks. And this is the world's first integral G10 folding knife. We've seen stuff like integral aluminum or integral titanium before. But these are the actual, uh, actually the first guys to do it out of G10. You get some of the same advantages in that you've got the single piece construction for that handle. It's comfortable because you don't have a seam at the back that might pinch you. It's also nice and strong. Now this knife actually has, in my mind at least, a few similarities with that swordfish we looked at earlier in that it's got the deep carry pocket clip to keep it nice and subtle, but it's a little wider, but it doesn't fold up super wide in the pocket either. You've got plenty of blade length to work with in that size. So plenty of capability without a big footprint. Three and a or three and three quarter inch blade, 154 CM steel, very thin in the cross section there. You can see it's got a great slicing geometry. It's also got a nice swedge along the bulk of the spine to help ease the, uh, the friction along that back edge and a liner lock here bolted to the inside of that G10 and ball bearings in the pivot. You saw how nicely that flipped out, but it's got a lot to recommend at that price, especially that excellent construction going on. All right, guys, this is just honestly a small assortment of the exclusives that we have uh, at the Knife Center, and we're always working on more. I mean, I'm, I'm super excited about some of the stuff we've got into the pike, got in the pike. I can't wait to show you folks out there once it gets in. But until then, you know, mum's the word, of course, we don't want to spoil anything. But let me know what your favorites were. And if you want to get your hands on any of our exclusives, there will be links in the description to take you over to the Knife Center. Of course, make sure you sign up for the Knife Rewards program so that when you put some of your monies down on one of these knives today, you'll get some free monies to spend on a future one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.